From humble beginnings with a desire to serve the Dudley community, Bank of Dudley has grown to five locations, serving Lawrence, Twiggs, and surrounding counties. Serving our community since 1905, the Bank of Dudley is looking forward to its second century of community banking. Drop in today to any of our five locations, Jeffersonville, Dudley, East Dublin, Veterans Boulevard, and Downtown Dublin. Bank of Dudley, member FDIC, and an equal housing lender. everyone we welcome you out to Fairview Park Hospital we're here with Dr. Thomas Lawhorn uh, surgeon here uh, new procedures here at Fairview Park Hospital uh, we're here in the operating or recovery room yeah. operating you're real familiar with this area yeah gratefully I'm not but it's good to be in here good to be able to speak with well, you thanks doctor. for having me appreciate yeah. it so I've heard uh, very good reports on uh, the surgeries that you've done the accomplishments on on many people you know when you heal someone's back when you when you help them get up and, and alleviate that pain uh, after years of discomfort, uh, they sure do sing your acclimates. And so yeah. I know you hear a lot of that, and it has to be very rewarding. So we wanted to come out today and be able to speak to you, maybe get a little history on you. Where did yeah. you grow up, Doctor? Well, I appreciate uh, all you said. It, yeah, well, I feel like we've been able to do a lot, lot here. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up in Columbus, Georgia. Uh, so I um, uh, lived there you know, up, up until 18, I went off to school. I uh, kind of went up to the Northeast to do my training. I went to Princeton for undergrad, came back to Emory for medical school, mm -hmm. and then did my orthopedic and uh, sp uh, spine surgery training up in the Northeast again. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, you uh, fellowship? Where was that? It was in Chicago. Uh, so, uh, and then, and then uh, came back here. I've been working here for 10 years. And so, uh, so mm -hmm. it's my, my actually, September 1st will be my 10th, 10 year anniversary. Well, all yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, Appreciate after a decade, you should have a lot of uh, people singing your praises. <laughs> well, it's done a lot of surgery. Yeah, yeah sure. well, it took, it took some, took some time, but it's been, it's been fun. It's a wonderful community to work in. I love yeah. It. Yeah. yeah. So I know you have a great relationship here with Fairview Park. You do surgeries yeah. at other places. You've served people throughout the, the area in middle and south Georgia. Well, one of the, one of the major things I think Fairview has done is, you know, historically, there was spine surgery here, had all the equipment, had all the, the tables, uh, all, all, everything we needed. Just had, it, it had gone dormant for a while. What I was amazed with was how quickly the staff and the administration was able to, to, to re revive the spine program here and kind of get it up and running really quickly. Um, it was able to just um, you know go from within really like a two-year process to go from having no no cases to to really basically doing almost anything that I can do at, at this facility, which is they've, they've done an amazing job in that. I credit the administrative uh, administration of the hospital as well as the OR staff for that. Mm -hmm. Doctor, let's talk a little bit about what people suffer from. Uh, what are yeah. the most common uh, back pains? Maybe what, uh, how many people suffer from back pain? Well, you know, it, back pain in and of itself is a common problem. And I, I, I think, you know, 90% of people will have it at some point in their life. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, though, it doesn't require a surgeon's help. You know, most of the time it just gets better on its own. Mm -hmm. the, the, the kind of problems for, for back and neck issues where you know, they, they come to see us, we have to do things, is when that is associated with pain either shooting down the arm or mm -hmm. the legs. You know, mm -hmm. back, back pain down the legs or neck pain down the arm, that's where you need to kind of like have somebody look at it. Cause that, mm -hmm. that, that's, that's usually due to like nerve entrapment, and that's how it kind of... When, when back pain in and of itself usually is just treated conservatively, but when it's associated with, with an inability to walk due to leg pain, you need to see somebody for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's okay. the difference. Do uh, most people get referred to you? They usually go to a general practitioner? Or? Yeah, we can go, you can come see us through the, through the primary care doc, or you mm -hmm. can just just call the office. Um, there's not there's not a right or way to get in. It's just okay. whatever whatever you feel. And usually, you know, if if you've tried some things like therapy, chiropractic, mm -hmm. things like that, haven't gotten better, you mm -hmm. probably need to come in to see somebody. Yeah. You know, yeah. same thing like reoccurring. Right, exactly. If it's coming okay. up over and over again, mm -hmm. you just can't quite nip it in the bud. Yeah. Kind of come in and see us, but. You know, I, I, I encourage folks to try alternative things. You know, I mentioned chiropractic. You know, so sometimes docs don't don't want people to do that. But I, honestly, I feel like you know, if it's helping you out, 
give it a try. You know, yeah. if you if you need a surgeon, you're gonna you're gonna make it to us eventually. Yeah. So just tr just try some things on your own. When, right. As things progress and get worse, I, come in and see us. You can, and some people want to come in early or late. It's just whatever's whatever's up to up to you. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. We're all individuals. Exactly. And we're going to make up our mind in our own way you a lot it. of times, right? All right. So, doctor, what would we say would uh, maybe be a common age of uh, maybe male or female that would come and see? Well, you know, um, typically folks that are working hard have back and neck problems, and so that's that's kind of your working age, folks. So. Mm -hmm. You know, 25 to 65. That's that's kind of the, the main scene. Typically, it, when you're younger than that, mm -hmm. you've got enough youth in you. It doesn't really drive you to see a doctor. Yeah. Once you're over 65 or so, you're not you know not really putting that many demands on it, and so it doesn't. I don't typically see as many. I, I'd be happy to see 85, 95 sure. year olds. But sure. but as far as my the population in my office, mm -hmm. it's it's that it's that working age folks, yeah. folks that are kind of getting up and and going and every mm -hmm. every day putting and a strain on their back because yeah. that's definitely you know what you do for a living contributes a lot to, to yeah. what to your back problems and neck problems yeah you know how, how hard you're working on it what you've done in the past to be at car accidents etc sure. and then also what your family history is you know did, did your mom and dad have back issues mm -hmm. those three things your your history of, of, of trauma your physically demands on your job and your, mm -hmm. your family history those three things drive you more than anything to the to the to see a back doctor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you if you're in construction work, if you lift a lot, uh, if maybe if, even if you work out a lot, you could, you know, cause yourself that pain. I, I guess you see it from that. But are there other situations that one should look at? Um, working in an office, uh, any repetitious things that you may do. You know, and, and sometimes things are just going to happen just randomly too. Mm -hmm. You know, so people who. Have never been in the military, never worked a physical manager, I work at a desk, have have neck pain shooting down the arms. I saw mm -hmm. a couple of those today. Mm -hmm. Some sometimes there's there's not a uh, a reason for it, but but the, the way to minimize that thing is to minimize the stress on your body. And I think good ergonomic placement of your chairs and your and your screens in the office, those are some things you can do to kind of keep your keep your neck and your back up, upright as you're working. Those those are some things you can do to help yourself. It doesn't take your chances to zero, but it, it lowers the chances of having to see someone like me later on. Yeah, and when you get to the point and you come in, you get checked out by you, uh, I know a lot in the past, uh, a lot of issues have been dealt with by a type of medication, maybe a pain medication. How do you feel about that at this day and time? Well, you know, the, the first thing you, you need to, to try is anti-inflammatories, that leave, Motrin, those kind of things. And, and, and as things progress, if, you, if things get worse and worse, I mean, you, you, you have to try stronger medications. And I, I don't think it needs to be a, a permanent solution to the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's, as far as a stopgap to help somebody get over a, a tough period of time, a short, a short period of, of, of pain medications, I think, are, are, are acceptable. Yeah. I think. Yeah, we, when you first start to have that uncomfortableness of whatever part of your neck or back or what have you, are there um, some remedies as far as stretching exercises, things you could do one could find online, or do you have that available? Yeah, we got that in the office. If you want to swing by and grab some of those, those back exercises, that'd be fine to do. Uh, Over-the-counter anti-inflammatory is a good thing to start with. And then, you know, if you just want to get a... A check out by a therapist. Uh, we we can do that. Fairview's got a wonderful therapy department here. So there's another couple places in town that do as well. I mean, so um, having having working out or working a regimen, either with online exercises or in the guidance of a of a therapist, is always a good way to kind of first line approach to, to treating back problems. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. yeah, and hopefully that'll help a person. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But then sometimes you'll progress. Uh, the issue will will continue, and it's just too much pain to put up with so uh, it would come into you for some type of consultation how does that usually go well usually uh, like you said just kind of assessing what what they've done so far you know mm -hmm. a lot of it's just talking about hey what have you done what what are your symptoms like well here's here here's here's some things we can do going forward mm -hmm. and that's really what uh, I'm here for very rarely do the does, does someone present with an emergency for us usually what we're doing is elective things okay. and and I'm just pre presenting to them options option one or option two or option three oh, you know, right. which one you want to do mm -hmm. and and that's usually the way we can handle a lot of these problems and 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 
like you said, everybody's a different individual. You can kind of you can try things that are more um, conservative or more aggressive based off everybody's personal threshold for, mm -hmm. for, for those kind of. So treatments. just because you're a surgeon doesn't mean when the person comes and sees you, surgery is the option. Oh, I mean, I I saw 30 patients in the office today, and only one or two needed surgery. You know, mo most of the most of the time. Uh, surgery is what, 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 we, what we do, uh, but most of the time we're, we're treating things more conservatively, kind of getting folks uh, feeling better without having to do that. You know, that's, that's, the, that's the catch, that's the last option, mm -hmm. uh, and, and if, if you go through them all and it doesn't work. But yeah. most of the time, options one, two, three are going to get you out the door mm -hmm. and before you have to get to that last option. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And doctor, when you look at uh, how medicine has progressed from the time you were in college, fellowship, you got your training, even the last decade that you've been uh, practicing here, um, how has it progressed? Well, one thing is, a big thing has changed, and that's probably over the last 20 years, um, is, 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 is as far as the surgery goes, that things are more minimally invasive. And so what was... What was um, a surgery that was 20 years ago would put you out of the work for six months and in the hospital for a week. Now it can be done, you know, uh, uh, overnight stay or even outpatient mm -hmm. and back at work in, in 10 to 14 days. And that's one thing that Fairview's done a really good job of committing towards and getting the right equipment in, in here that we can offer those minimally invasive uh, techniques. Uh, and that's, that's one of the biggest changes I've seen in spine surgery over the last you know, 20 years is that is, is that minimal impact to the body to get the maximum benefit on the back end. Yeah, and since we talk about the different levels of care that you offer, the, the uh, minimal all the way up until yeah. surgery is a final resolution of, a, of an issue. Um, after surgery, is there usually physical therapy, things like that? You know, we, we try physical therapy more on the front end, and we certainly do a lot of that. Typically, when we get to a surgery for, 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 for the spine, it's a fix. I mean, when, when, when the fix is over, uh, you're fixed and you can go back to doing okay. what you were doing. So mm -hmm. uh, unlike other orthopedics like shoulder, knee, hip, mm -hmm. where, where getting therapy afterwards is really important, usually what we do, the surgery's the fix and, and, you're, and you're done after that point. Yeah. So um, you, we try to do therapy as an attempt to avoid surgery. Um, more than it is a treatment after surgery. Okay, yeah. so yeah. so let's think again now. If someone's watching and they've been putting up with some back pain for a period of time, what what key signs do they look for where they say, I need to get it looked at? Sure, I mean, I, th I think it, it, it really boils down to your quality of life. Are you having to stop the things that you would like to do because of problems in your neck or back? Mm -hmm. and particularly back pain that back pain that goes down the legs, neck pain that goes down the arms. If those things are getting to a point where we're like, look, six months ago I was doing this, now I can't. You know, that, that's, that should be the tipping point for you to come in. Um, and it's really a matter of, uh, you know, everyone's got a different pain threshold as far as what they can tolerate and can or cannot. But, but uh, as f your, your function, how you're functioning in life should really be the driver of, of t seeking medical care. So, Dr. Lawhorn, what would one do to get in touch with you? What's the best way? You know, you, you can call the hospital. You can call our office here in Dublin, um, um, and they can just get you in. I, we, we, you certainly can have somebody refer you, but you also can just call and make an appointment, just the good old-fashioned way. Yeah. We don't have any, any barriers around us. All right. So Wonderful. If you, yeah. Wonderful having the number on the screen for you right there. You Great. can get in touch with the office. Uh, we thank you again for what you're doing in the community for the, again, the people who brag on the job that you've done to help them get back and lead an active lifestyle because when surgery is the option, it sounds like you're the man to come to. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to talk to everybody today. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for joining us right here on TV 35.